There's this beautiful story in the New Testament. Jesus is having dinner and a woman comes in who was a prostitute. She was a known sinner and she has a jar of perfume and she breaks it at Jesus's feet and she begins to wipe his feet with the perfume and her hair. And I mean, there's a lot of reasons why this was very troublesome to Jesus's hosts. This woman, again, was a known sinner. Um, it wasn't okay for a woman to let down her hair in public. That would have been really inappropriate. But what I think is so beautiful about this story is she may have been at the place where Jesus was teaching and she may have heard him say, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it could have been that when she heard those words for the first time in her life, hope welled up and she was able to see something different in her future and receive something different for her eternity. So this is an incredible verse. I want to focus on the part about my yoke is easy, my burden is light, because I think we need some of that today. So let's talk about what that means in our context today. So I actually was driving to my mom and dad's farm is kind of what got me thinking about this topic. Now, um, my mom and dad don't have any animals that are yoked, um, <laughs> maybe some beef cattle and uh, cash crops and that type of thing. So this passage, when Jesus is talking about a yoke, he was responding to something very specific in the teachings of his day. See, the Pharisees and the religious lead leaders, they had taken the Ten Commandments, which were beautiful. The Ten Commandments were a covenant that God made with his people in order to allow them to come into a righteous relationship with him. He said, this is how you can be in relationship with me, with someone who is perfect and who is good. But then what happened over the course of time is those Ten Commandments got broken down into more and more laws and rules rules such that by the time Jesus arrived on the scene, there were over 600 laws that Jewish people were expected to keep. And then on top of that, each rabbi or religious leader might have some of their own ways that they would add on to it. So, I mean, you can imagine it would have been nearly impossible to remember all of these rules, let alone possibly uphold them. And so when Jesus came and he's saying, hey, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, he is removing all of those laws and all of those precepts. And he's saying, I'm going to make this very simple. I'm going to boil it down to two things. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. And in me now, you will find your righteousness. So in Jesus, and when we make him Lord of our lives, that's when we become righteous. And this is such an important paradigm shift for us because even today, I feel like we can get caught up in all of the different things that we need to do in order to be in relationship with God. In fact, we've been teaching on them. We've been digging into prayer and we can think, oh, I need to pray more. I need to read my Bible more. I need to do these things in order to be righteous. And this passage and all of the teachings of Jesus and his life are emphasizing it is not about what you do. Now, if you are Jesus's friend, there are things that you can and should do to demonstrate that as a natural overflow of a life lived in him. But trying to earn or perform or do anything to get more of his righteousness or his love or his favor, impossible. And so then when we start to look at what it means to be yoked with Christ, again, if we start talking in farm terms, a yoke was a wooden tool that was used to tie two animals together for the purpose of pulling a wagon or cart or working in a field. And the nature of this yoke is a farmer or a landowner would usually take great care to custom fit that piece for the animals that he was working with. Because the truth was, this tool was heavy and it was burdensome. So it was important that it was comfortable, that it wouldn't cause rubbing or sores or discomfort, and it would allow them to do the most work possible. Now, the other aspect of this tool is that 
a landowner would often take a more experienced ox and tie it with a less experienced one in order to train them. And this is beautiful because if we imagine ourselves yoked with Jesus, being given a custom fit piece of equipment that binds us together, you're going to see that naturally now our options are limited. Our path is becoming more straight and narrow, and we have the opportunity now to learn from him and to become more like him and also for him to bear our burdens and for him, for us to truly receive the grace and the comfort and the strength that we need through him. Lastly, on this yoke topic, we see that two animals yoked together could actually carry four times the load as one animal individually. So it wasn't even that their capacity was doubled when they were yoked together. It's that they became exponentially more effective in the work or the calling that was set before them. So you can see how important this idea is and how beautiful it is that we get to tie ourselves together with someone who is so good, who is so gracious and who is so powerful. So practically today, what does that look like in our lives? Uh, I think it's actually relevant that I'm in the van because the way we can look at this is who has the most influence in our lives? Like who's riding shotgun with us? Like, cause for example, when I'm riding shotgun with my husband, I usually have a lot to say. I usually am like, giving directions. <laughs> I often am the one programming the radio. Uh, maybe I'm tending to the kids and helping get them whatever they need. I might be making like a dinner reservation or looking what's open looking up what's open and that type of thing. There's a lot happening usually when you're riding in the passenger seat, at least if you're me <laughs> and you're bossy. <laughs> and so we can look at who are the people on social media? Who are the people on YouTube? Who are the pastors that I'm listening to? Who are the friends? Who in my workplace has a voice in my life? You know, sometimes unknowingly, those inputs that we're taking in have more influence that we understand, than we understand. If you hear a message enough times, if you are around someone long enough, you are going to start to become like them and you're going to take on those mindsets. And so it's vital that we are constantly auditing our inputs. Who are we watching? Who are we listening to? Who are the people that we're surrounding us with? And ultimately, how am I receiving the inputs of Jesus Christ in my life and staying under his influence and lordship? So it's important that the people that are riding shotgun with us, that the voices that we're taking in are all helping to point us back to him. We need that. Lastly, on this topic, we get to approach the throne of grace freely. Our righteousness, again, is not dependent on our performance. However, it is important that we are in right standing with Jesus. So at any point in the day, the week, the evening, the morning, we can come to him and say, Lord, I don't want to do this bad habit anymore. I don't want to think this way anymore. I am watching too much of whatever on Netflix or on YouTube. I, I am having some negative inputs. Give me the discipline to choose better influences in my life. And Father, bring them to me. Please bring me a great church family. Bring me godly friends. Will you please provide? And again, approach that, that throne of grace freely because his righteousness is enough and his grace will give us the strength and the spiritual empowerment we need to constantly be yoking our lives with him. So Father, I thank you. Oh Jesus, thank you that we have such a good and loving Savior who is so gracious to help carry our load to use it as a training ground, to narrow our path, to lead us in righteousness, and to help us to be servants, to help us to be humble in our relationships toward others, and to help us to seek first the kingdom. So Father, I ask today, would you give us an even greater revelation of what it means to be yoked with Christ, of what it means to partner our life with yours, to pursue Lord, the calling that you have for us and to trust that together we can do exponentially more. So I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.